The toy companies don't want me having guns. We'll show them. <sighs> okay, people, welcome back to another play day, but a different kind of play day. These are all unique characters or accessories from smaller companies. We'll start off looking at some Gridiron Studios weapons and drone and walls and throne. I didn't mean to rhyme that. I, really, I didn't. They just bit. Then there's the Morphonauts combat creatures resin outputs that <laughs> I didn't think were going to be posable, but oh yeah, they're posable. I finally opened my Plunderlings Plunder Strongs and man, they're just <laughs> fun. That's the name of the game, right? When it comes to play day, just having some fun. Because then, oh man, why have I not got into Astrobots before this? I've always loved the look of them and they've always been in the plans. I've always thought, yeah, I'm going to grab one soon when the budget opens up and the budget never opens up. And now I've played with some and well, we'll just get into it and then go from there. Starting off with some Gridiron Studios armory weapons. Look at this badass gun. And I'm going to tell you right now, before you get mad, before you start angry typing, no, I don't know the names of weapons. I just know gun and rifle and shooty shooty. Look at that thing. I know that's a shotgun mounted underneath the barrel of that. And I've looked at gridiron stuff before. The detail is just fantastic. I do believe this is also a shotgun with a folding stock and it does not fold back. But I love, <laughs> again, the detail work. And if you look really close, you see the gridiron logo right there on the side. Ooh, opening weapons. I have no clue what this is. Some kind of grenade launcher underneath? This is a different, oh, okay. <laughs> I only realized that because it's a different colored resin or plastic or whatever is being used here. There is a little bit of flex to it. I don't feel like it's gonna break, but it's also solid. It has a little bit of heft to it. I do believe this is also another shotgun. The shell's mounted right there on the side. Looks like these just need a little bit of paint to them. They're, they're all in one solid color. I say as I open this one where the wood parts are brown. Pushing, little twisting, and it is perfect scale for your Marvel Legends figures. Here's another nice looking rifle with a scope of some kind, a suppressor, and once again, this does come out. And it's very satisfying because it does lock in. There's a pop to it. Oh, on the back too, before I put all the packages away, AK Series 1 available now. And if you go to the website, you can look at all those. But this is, yep, it's another shotgun. And then finally for the single weapons, there's two revolvers. They also work pretty well with your G.I. Joes. Nearly forgot the last one, this big honking bloody chainsaw. Look at the detail on that. That's freshly used. To hell with Leatherface, real men wear burgers. There's also this gridiron throne, or before I looked it up, I called it the hot lead throne. Just a ton of weapons and ammo boxes stacked on top of each other in chair form. I don't know how else to describe this crazy thing. Nice green to all the boxes and then the silver dry brush on the guns. You get around to the back here and once again there's the Gridiron Studios logo painted in gold sticking out at you. You gotta go looking for it back here on the shield but mm, that looks great. Well in fact there's silver everywhere. Give it an aged look and the wood these studs painted, I, like I always say, I love that little extra effort, that extra mile. This would look amazing anywhere with any character, but you know who I'm going to stick in this to show it off, to demonstrate how it works. Finally in the box was this. I thought, okay, cool. It's a crate. What can I do with this? And then when I picked it up, I felt some weight and a little bit of shake to it. Not a shake weight. Uh, some shaky weight. I'm terrible at figuring things out without instructions, but I finally realized, oh, there's an opening right there with a bar in it. So if I pull hard enough, it comes apart. And then, oh, so many surprises. Inside was this nifty drone. And we're gonna come back to this because this unassuming piece is way more useful than you would think. First of all, I went through all this and I attached these, which it calls articulated heavy weapon mounts. So I guess something else goes on there later because there's also this big bastard that plugs into the top that I'm definitely gonna get on the website in order. But I did figure out these flamethrowers that plug in underneath the body. There's a tank back here with pipes running to here. All you gotta do is plug this on. The only reason it wasn't on in the first place is because they stick out a little and the crate wouldn't close. There's this control panel up here on the back, 
a sensory array right here with the side to sides and the eye in the middle. I also had to plug this gun in and I think I got it right. These rails were also separate, plugged those on just to add a little bit of, I mean, if it, explosion, it's gonna roll right over. Just keep going. The treads do turn, but there's a tightness to them and I can't quite get them to roll on the ground and push right. okay looking at the website there are some rocket launchers that mount to here along with some guns and like i mentioned those big dual gatling gun things those will be mine because it's gonna be a little bastard on the battlefield even these ammo boxes come out of the top in case you know you need to load things up also has a control unit that can be mounted on an arm. And once again, we bring in Deadpool, just pop it right on there, and he's in business. Oh yeah, go find Wolverine. There was also this big, big gun included with the accessories. You can see the box on the side with the ammo going in. And the size of this plug matched this hole up top. So I thought, there you go, <laughs> that's good. And there was also these four pegs in the bag, and I had no clue what these were for. Then I realized that there are peg holes on the side of this crate. So <laughs> I did the next logical thing. I went and looked it up on the Gridiron Studios website and it, it was obvious once I saw the pictures. Fold this out and fold this down and take these out. It's very modular. You can take this and put this wall here and then put a peg here and a peg here. Put this in like a floor. Maybe throw this one down here underneath for more stability. And then you can peg this up here and you have kind of a, a guard tower or something where you can just put characters watching the perimeter. Stand up, Deadpool. Or you can put it back together and have some kind of wall with the character behind it or whatever you want to do. Stand up, Deadpool. That also plugs right there. So you have somebody behind here, they can use this gun. It's almost like Lincoln Logs. If anybody remembers Lincoln Logs, Legos, whatever. And I'm guessing if you have a lot of these, you can go even further than that because these come apart. You can take everything completely out and you have another floor piece and more of these that you can use as fence or something, anything. Yeah. Here is the Morphonauts Combat Creatures Lunar. Bo was kind enough to send out some resin prints of the figures that are now on Kickstarter. In fact, I think it funded today as I'm recording this. Usually with resin, I try to be gentle with it. I'm afraid of breaking it. And that's the way I was with this for a little bit. But as I started messing around with it and pushing it a little more and more each time, this is about as close to an action figure as you can get using this medium. There's still some squeaks here and there that do make me a little nervous, but I've been trying to pose this as much as possible because, hey, that's what I do, right? This is the perfect entry point for someone like me who never messed around with Battle Beasts. I saw that they were inspired by that line, but in my head, I just thought, oh, well, they're great looking anthropomorphic warrior figures. And that is exactly what they are. Just <laughs> badass animal guys going at it. Creatures doing combat. I get the name now. I love that the moon is worked into the weapons and how they plug into the back of the wrist, but they're actually just swords. If you don't want to use them like that, you can put them in the hand and use them as swords. And there's some moon up on the shoulder pad. Now these are big and chunky, right? and they are attached with a ball joint at the shoulder. So they do get up and out of the way of the arm. Put that sword in the hand, but I do kind of like them jammed into the back right here. And you can see it scratching a little bit. That's just me going in and out of places where resin shouldn't go. I rotated this a minute ago. Okay, yeah, that does come off. So there is some modularity. You can swap pieces with other figures, change it up a bit make different factions because there's also this robot helmet head that you can swap out with this one and i as brave as i've been with the rest of the body i haven't wanted to go yanking parts off but if you order this on kickstarter you get the idea this could be the leader and then he has a bunch of troops in helmets or robots or whatever you want to do there's also this gun that has swappable pieces i guess 
you order the rest, you can change things out and make each one different. And he also sent along the shark, Sea Lock. And I had already said that this was my favorite before I got the box. So it just kind of worked out that way. There's this shark head shield that plugs in where the sword's plugged in on the wolf. Well, he's got the same gauntlets too. And every seafaring warrior has to have a serrated sword. That's in the manual. That's the rules. Shoulder pads fit the motif. Again, another shark head here. It's kind of fishy, isn't it? You're looking at my crotch. Looks like, oh, yep, there's that. You can pull this off, put it on the wolf if you want. And there's also this, again, all kinds of options. It's pretty neat. Dumbbell joint for the wrist, so you can get some in and out, and there is some up and down. Weapon wielding hand in full effect. Same thing for the ankles, so you're gonna get some back and forth and some rock to it. A lot more range to the abs. Well, okay, not with this belt buckle. There's a point sticking up right there, but again, it comes off, so you can see how much crunch this gets, and then Point the head up and just running into battle. And it says 6.5 inch, but as you can see, this is gonna fit in with 1 12th too, if that's your main display. But if you're into the original Battle Beast scale, there's also these cute little versions of all these characters. Well, I say cute, they are mean looking. They rip your head off if you look at them sideways, but I, I just little minions for the big guys. Dad, can we get ice cream? Not today, son. Like I said, the Kickstarter did fun today and it still has a few days on it. So if you're interested in these, the link is in the description, go check them out. Oh, I finally have Plunder Strongs in hand and Captain Blackjack looks amazing. I mean, the paint alone on these earrings, it's so sharp. And those eyes peering out from there with the gloss to it, I, I love it. I mean, it's almost scary. I know this is cartoony, but it's also mean looking. This tint of raspberry here, it just breaks up the color of the skin enough to make you think, well, there is a touch of realism because that's also plugged in here on the elbow and down on the knees. And I don't know why I love that so much. We saw the same thing on the plunderlings and it just, again, it's cartoony, but it's a little splash that draws your eye, but it's also subtle where it doesn't draw your eye. I've apparently lost my mind. I don't know what I'm talking about anymore. That's what good toys do to me. The detail on the belt, could you imagine wearing this every day? That is sharp as hell. You bend down to pick something up off the floor. And then the touches of silver there on the belt, the buckle, these studs going around to the back, this white for whatever the hell those are. Now I did get to mess with the prototype of this. So I already have experience with this big old hinge in the upper torso. Now, if you go back, you see it right there, but this pec piece is flexible rubbery. Just flex forward and look how far it goes down. Then you hinge the neck forward and you suddenly have a brute plunder strong where he's just Then there is a butterfly that pops out for a little forward arm movement. Got some double knees that does have some ass kicking action. Plunder strong. Balls coming out to the hips, go all the way forward and back and <laughs> better than Spider-Man. But Captain Blackjack here, He's a refined man, and I think that because of his accessories. Well, I say that, he's got some pretty angry alternate heads, but I think this is my favorite. He's calm, cool, collected. First, I love the magnet feature in Plunderlings or Plunderstrong's heads that just sticks down. It comes out over the ears. It looks fantastic. It just works. Then there is this, and for some reason, I put this on, and he becomes just a menace to the seven seas. He's up in the command section of a big old boat, just barking orders, coming up with plans, plotting, scheming, or at least that's how I see gold trim and tassels. But then he comes with this big old cannon and this is where the fun begins. Not that this isn't fun, but come on, look at that. This is fairly hollow and light. But in order to utilize this to the fullest, you need the boom crate. With that, you get one of these, which you can load right into the end of the cannon. And then you see where we're going here, right? There's a ball joint on the end. You can use the coconut, bowling ball, cannon ball, this gray stony looking ball, this spiked ball, or you can use a plunderling head like fwoosh. That just pops right on. Not a problem at all. And you can set up Captain Blackjack to fire this thing. Then there's this big translucent blast effect that looks absolutely fantastic. And that plugs into the end there. And then again with the ball joint. 
lots of action. But I think my favorite of the ones I got is the Drench Typhoon. One, it's translucent green plastic. That's hard to beat. But these tentacles down on bottom with the swivel and then the swivel. I mean, it's not a ton of movement. Oh, it swivels there too. But it's just enough to make it dynamic and changes things up from what we're used to seeing with the plunderlings and the plunder strongs and the plunder longs. Serrated sword, I told you. Sea creatures have to have serrated swords. Right, Merman? Hell yeah. I also love, love, love these leather looking forearm guards. Be careful, they are sharp, but it adds a splash, uh, splash, a splash of color against the sea green. Those eyes peering out with that tooth. You get it in the right kind of light and they shine. It's like he's just risen from the waters and he's gonna kick some ass. There's an angry yelling head and then kind of a mean mug head. Got some extra hands. And then check this out. I, I do think the magnet sticks out a bit on top because you can see through the plastic. So of course you're gonna see the magnet right there. A way to cover that up is give him his fin mohawk. I heard you like fins on your sea type creature. Here's an extra fin right there. I'm not even mad that it makes him kind of savage dragony. Oh man, put all the fins to the back like, Oh, well, it does kind of make them forward tippy. An angry, plunder-strong sea god. Ooh, it just looks good. Getting into Astrobots, here is Artemis. And now that I have some in hand, oh man, why did I not get into these earlier? These are insanely articulated. Now, they can look a little disjointed at times if you get too far open or something, but then you just come down and you can turn and back and forth and these shoulders that go up and down and forward and back, the roboticness of them, the astrobotiness of them works in its favor because you can go a little bit away from human anatomy because here, well, I don't know. Look, the arm comes down. It looks fairly straight and normal, single jointed elbow, but then it comes up to here. Dumbbell mid torso that gets a tremendous amount of range. And there's a hinge for some crunchiness that goes all the way and that turns too. The hips are open, comes up and back and out and then there's rotation hidden by the body armor. At first you think, oh, single knee comes up to here, but then again, behind some armor pieces, there's another joint that comes up. Now they are gonna crash because of the shape, but come on now, that's impressive. Swivel at the ankle way up here and you get down here and there's the hinge and then the forward facing pin for some rotation that is covered by this and then a toe joint that's okay. That's not the most impressive ever, but it gets a little bit of movement. Then Artemis has these wheelie wings on the back where you can rotate forward and back. Then there's a hinge to go front to back. And then they open up scissor style for wing top things. Just amazing presence whenever you're doing poses. And pose she can. I could do this all day. It's just pure joy. It is so fun to get some action out of these things. Again, with the theme of this playdate, modularity. You can pull parts and pieces off and swap between figures. Or take that completely off and leave it there for a more bare bones look, whatever you wanna do. She does come with all sorts of hands. You have relaxed, you have flat, you have splayed out, there's grippy hands, there's this thing that I don't know what that is. But my favorite, has got to be this. It's a claw top hand that has hinges out this way and in this way and at that knuckle. Just so many joints in this one small piece. You can see the thumb on a ball joint that goes in and out and around and there's a joint in there too. 14 joints here. Oh, well, 15 if you count the wrist. Pull this hand out, plug this hand in. Then there's this slot on the back of the forearm that you can plug this on here. Another side, and she's got a big bird claw type thing happening. And again, it fits, almost like a bird of prey. She has her big claw, she swoops down, slashes, flies off. But as much as I like Artemis, I think I like Athenia a little bit more. It's the colors, she's lighter and brighter. This green 
with the yellows and the reds and the blues and this faded orange here on the back. I, I don't know, it, it just sings to me. Plus this whole rig on the back just adds a nice symmetry while not taking a lot of shelf real estate. This is gonna pop on a shelf. She just has a presence. And even just standing there with the different hands adding personality, uh, yeah, like a playful robot type. Athenia has these hip covers that kind of widens it down there, but again, they're just on pegs. You can take them off if you want to. But if you need some weapons, these also unplug and there's open hands. And then she's ready for battle with the swords. Oh, and here you can see the alternate faceplate. That is a bit tough to get off. You do have to get a flathead screwdriver in there and kind of pry it. Going back to Artemis, it looks like she has the same thing, that this comes off the front there, but she doesn't come with anything alternate. There's nothing to put on there. Is there an expansion pack or something? Another accessory pack kit? I don't know. I need to get on the Astrobot side, I guess. As much as I love them, Vulcan has captured my heart. Look at this big chunk of plastic robot. He is heavy machinery. He's got the drill bits and the pistons or boosters or whatever to penetrate rock, steel, adamantium, the moon, whatever you want to punch a hole in. He's even got the intakes, he's got the cattle guard, he's got the shielding, he's got the heavy boots to lock him down on the ground in position while going at it. Reserve tank here on the back in case he runs out of gas. There are lights right here to complete that construction look that is turned on by this button but I can't find the AG2 batteries anywhere. I'm gonna have to get online and order some and then I'll do a follow-up at some point because I really want them to... But it is insane some of the poses you can get out of this. With double elbows in the extra arms, they come all the way up. And it's the same thing for his actual arms under there. And like we just talked about with Artemis's claw hand, this has even more joints. There is a hinge for each knuckle. 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. Have flaps around the legs to hide all that articulation that goes up and back. I mean, look how chunky this guy is, and he can still do this. That is insane. Okay, so the knees only go back that far. He can't kick his own metal ass, but it's a nice attempt at it. The feet go way the hell back, and then there's a toe joint. Well, okay, I'll call that a mid-foot joint because the toe joints are actually up there. There's this hinge that brings the arm up. There's rotation. But there's also extra articulation. If you pull this out, you can join this up and around. And that, ooh. And give it even more movement. It's the same concept for the robot. That arm also pulls out for extra ball movement there, for forward and back and up and around and oh, Don't forget about torso, it's so crunchy. And up, and then there is some tilt to it, and rotation. <laughs> Essentially, whatever you wanna do with this figure, you can do it. Don't worry about it. <laughs> if you can imagine it, it will be done. The drills do spin, but if you don't wanna use them as drills, pull the cover off, claws that open up and they're grippy. That is a neato hidden feature that just another level. I, as I was messing with it when I got it out of the box, it was like I started here and then it was like, oh, look at that. And again, I've talked about Astrobots on the weekly before, but I've never ponied up the money. I've never went out and actually got one. As much as I wanted them, I didn't. I should have because I now know what I've been missing all this time. I like robots. I like action figures. This is a good looking robot action figure. I'm pretty happy. So at the end of the day, we played. And that is a good damn day. Again, a little different. Some produced items. I'm gonna get back to customs next time because I do have some stuff I'm working on, some stuff that I've received, just, <laughs> yeah, I'm taking it as I open stuff up. But as far as what we played with today, the links are in the description. If you want some Astrobots or some Plunderlings, some Morphonauts, some Gridiron Studios, yeah, it's all available down in the description. And I love that the market's opened up to things like this, where if you have the means and the resources and the skills and the talent and the drive and you want to make an action figure, get out there and do it. Now, it's not always guaranteed because you also have to 
go with the market and what people want and everything. But even then, I mean, you don't even have to mass produce it anymore. You have resin printers, you have sculpting programs, you just do it. And then you print it out and you play with it. You can paint it up, you can do whatever you want. We are living in beautiful times when it comes to our beloved plastic. If you haven't found a way to play by now, <laughs> I don't know what to tell you. I mean, we are one step away from things just appearing in front of us where we can just... <sighs> <laughs> yeah.